stay connected, stay informed. News Radio 1000, FM 97.7. It is 7.02 right now. The sun's shining in the Pacific Northwest. The temperature in Seattle, it's 55 degrees. Good morning. I'm Greg Hersholt. Manda is off this morning. Here's what's happening. A fatal crash early this morning continues to have southbound I-5 closed at Northgate Way. And the ramifications of that stretch for miles. Let's get the latest now in a live update from Carlene Johnson. Well, Greg, this crash that happened around 3.15 this morning, here we are nearly four hours later, and we still have the southbound lanes of I-5 blocked off with traffic being diverted from the freeway at Northgate Way. Now, initially it blocked both directions when one of the vehicles involved hit a light pole, and that pole crashed down in the northbound lanes. That was cleared up pretty quickly, but the primary collision still blocks southbound I-5. There were two semis and two passenger vehicles involved, and now we're told one of the drivers of the passenger vehicles is in custody for suspected impairment and investigation of vehicular homicide because one of the people in one of those vehicles was pronounced dead at the scene. Vehicle imp- or driver impairment, I should say, according to State Trooper Rick Johnson, happens all too often. We're looking for him 24-7. They may arrest him, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, at nine in the morning. Um, uh, granted, most are, you know, in the hours of darkness. Um, Got to be vigilant as you're driving no matter what time of the day it is. No other information released at this point on a possible reopening, but we are, again, coming up on four hours since this crash happened in Kier. We'll have an update in just a couple of minutes for us. Reporting live, Carlene Johnson, Northwest News Radio. Thanks, Carlene. We are learning now that the person who was killed was the driver of one of the semis involved in this accident. The Seattle Fire Department describes him as a 47-year-old man. The victims of a fatal seaplane crash from over the weekend have now been formally identified publicly one day after a search for their remains was suspended. The latest on that in a report from Whidbey Island with Corwin Hake. The U.S. Coast Guard now has confirmed the identities of nine of the ten presumed dead when a Haviland Canada DHC-3 Otter flow plane crashed into Mutiny Bay Sunday on its way from Friday Harbor to Renton. Michael Allen is among the neighbors here who told Como 4 they not only heard but felt an explosion prior to the crash. It was so loud that it literally shook me at my home and that's up on the hill here and it's like a mile out there. Among the victims are the pilot Jason Winter. His passengers included Spokane civil rights activist and newspaper publisher Sandy Williams, winery owner Ross Mickle, his wife Lauren Hilty, and their young son. Other passengers named by the Coast Guard include Patricia Hicks, Luke Ludwig, Rebecca Ludwig, Joanne Mira, and Gabrielle Hanna. A ninth passenger and the only one whose remains have been recovered still awaits identification. On Whidbey Island, Corwin Hake, Northwest News Radio. Coming up after we check traffic for you. Part of I-90 needs to be rebuilt. I'm Brian Calvert with the upcoming four-day closure you're going to want to plan for. Now to the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center in Kiara, Jordan. So we do still have all southbound lanes of I-5 blocked at Northgate with this fatality crash investigation. You are being detoured around the scene using the collector distributor lane, so you will be able to get through, but there is such a major backup before you can even do so. The brake lights are coming on at 220th, and you will crawl your way into Northgate. That is after you have fought some heavy slowing that begins north of the Boeing Freeway to the 405 split. We're looking at about an hour and 50 minutes from Everett into Seattle, going from Lynn to Seattle. That's at an hour and 20 minutes. A lot of drivers are jumping ship and heading for southbound 405. I'll tell you right now, Linwood to Bellevue, that's coming in at 42 minutes. And we've been working with an earlier car fire coming out of Federal Way, north on I-5, north of 272nd. Two right lanes have been blocked and you're sitting in solid traffic starting just north of State Route 18. That's after some crowding from 375th off and on to State Route 18. We had an earlier blocking problem southbound I-5 on the off-ramp to JBLM's main gate and that main gate uh, ramp was blocked for quite some time it's been reopened you will still see some vehicles over on the shoulder though and that's what's been creating this backup for about two and a half miles into the area our next northwest traffic out 714 
Now the forecast from the 1530mortgage.com Weather Center. Here's meteorologist Kristen Clark. Quiet today and just a touch warmer, reaching near 80 for Puget Sound this afternoon. All the while, we will have high fire danger on the western slopes of the Cascade Mountains. Low humidity, gusty winds, and tinder dry vegetation. Not a good combination. But fire danger does lower Wednesday and Thursday with the arrival of cooler conditions. In fact, there could be a fall-like feel in the air across the northwest interior with temperatures staying in the 60s Thursday afternoon. But rapid warming is set to occur starting Friday and especially this weekend, well into the 80s we go, Saturday and Sunday. In the Coma 4 Weather Center, meteorologist Kristen Clark. Bellingham, partly sunny and 48 degrees. It's only 45 in Olympia this morning and the temperature here in Seattle, 55 degrees with sunny skies. It's now 7.07. One of our local freeways is breaking apart and sinking. At least a section of it is. And so as a result, it will have to be reduced to a single lane for eight days while it's rebuilt. Details from Brian Calvert. This particular stretch of westbound I-90 was built over an old coal mine. East of Issaquah, uh, about a mile west of the High Point uh, interchange there. I don't know if you know, the freeway is pretty cracked up there. And there's water seeping out and stuff. Yeah, we're going to fix that. Tom Pierce with the Washington Department of Transportation says a 1,500-foot stretch of I-90 has to be rebuilt. And in order to do that... We are going to uh, have to reduce the freeway to one lane from 9 p.m. Sunday the 11th to 5 a.m. Thursday the 15th. He urges you to plan now. Not only will this happen on westbound I-90 this next week, but another four-day partial closure will narrow the freeway to just one lane again the following week. Brian Calvert, Northwest News Radio. Now the latest on the school labor troubles. Teachers in the Seattle district are still voting on a strike proposal. We expect to find out today if they'll be walking picket lines or teaching the first day of classes tomorrow morning. An update from Como 4's Denise Whitaker. Seattle Public Schools asked teachers to agree to start teaching on Wednesday without a contract while the two sides would then continue negotiating. Teachers rejected that idea. We know that we need to put our commitment to students in writing when it comes to staffing for special education. The union tells me they also need greater numbers of substitute teachers. There are bodies out there, but you have to respect the positions. They're not respecting the substitutes, nor are they respecting the teachers. Parents I'm talking with say they really can't see their children's teachers do need more help in their classrooms. These parents tell me they support teachers in a strike if that's what it takes to get what they deserve. And once again this morning, there's no school today in the Kent School District. Kent teachers have been on strike since August 25th. They are seeing much the same, or seeking much the same as other districts, including higher pay and smaller classes. The district says if schools remain closed, free meals will be served to kids starting Wednesday. They will alert parents to the locations. That's Como Force Molly Shen reporting. Teachers in Eatonville have failed to reach a contract to deal with their district, so they say they'll strike tomorrow if there isn't a breakthrough. The Eatonville district has warned parents to be ready to make alternate plans if kids are not in class. In Port Angeles, schools are starting on time today. The teachers there have reached a tentative deal on a new contract. We don't know the details of it, but the school board and the union still need to ratify that agreement. It is 710 right now. This is Northwest News Radio. Let's get you right to the Beacon Plumbing Sports Desk. Here's Tom Huntler with the latest on the Mariners. The Mariners hope to get back to their winning ways after losing to the White Sox yesterday 3-2 in the opener of a three-game series and big eight-game homestand. Too much Lance Lynn. The veteran pitcher struck out 11 and retired the last 17 Mariner batters he faced. Game two of the series tonight with Logan Gilbert on the mound for Seattle. That's a 640 start. And about 20 minutes later at Climate Pledge Arena, it's do or die for the Seattle Storm. Game four of the WNBA's Western Conference semifinals as they take on Las Vegas. A win propels them into a game five in Vegas Thursday. A loss and the season is over and so is the career of Sue Bird. Francis Tiafo. Ending Rafael Nadal's 22-match winning streak at Grand Slam tournaments, beating the 22-time major champion at the U.S. Open's fourth round. Tiafo, a 24-year-old from Maryland, was the number 22 seed and reached the second major quarterfinal of his career. Nadal, for his part, said no excuses. We can... uh make lamentations or we can co- we can complain now about uh, a lot of things but uh, i don't i don't think that's going to change any situation 
This marks the first U.S. Open without either of the top two seeded men reaching the quarterfinals since 2000. Sports at 10 to 40 past the hour. Tom Hutler, Northwest News Radio. It is 712. We'll check traffic and weather just a couple of minutes away for you. First, a deadly wildfire has broken out in California, and ABC's Will Carr says it comes as they're already dealing with several other fires. At least 1,500 households forced to evacuate after the Fairview fire exploded in the city of Hemet, scorching more than 2,700 acres, killing two civilians. We have a big evacuation order put in place due to extreme fire conditions that we're witnessing right now. The flames engulfing everything, burning homes, destroying cars, scorching structures, burning them to the ground. Firefighters rushing to stop the spread, fueled by dry conditions and strong winds, the fires only 5% contained. Over in this direction, it was just huge black cloud of smoke and it was coming towards us. To the north, the mountain fire burning for its fifth day, the west reeling from a summer of dangerous heat. California state officials now urging residents to cut down on power to avoid blackouts. And then at the other end of the country, people up and down the east coast are dealing with flash floods. 54 million Americans under flood alert across 10 states from Virginia up to New Hampshire. Helpless drivers under siege by an onslaught of water. Katie Cotter, one of several stranded on I-95 in Rhode Island. It was just crazy. Like, I've never been in something like that before. It was just buckets of rain coming down. It was just like nonsense. I was stuck for like uh, all in all three hours in my car. Countless vehicles stalled out, submerged or swept away. The highway's totally shut down, that's what I'm seeing, and people are going down the exit ramp the wrong, the opposite way, and a lot of people are wasting their gas. Mail trucks underwater. That same system dumping 10 inches of rain in parts of northern Georgia, washing out roads and flooding homes. And a lot of these northeastern states have been in drought conditions through the summer, so in that sense, all the rainfall is welcome, but the water falling on very dry ground is what is contributing to these chances for flash flood conditions. That's ABC News correspondent Trevor Alt. In Jackson, Mississippi, people still cannot drink the water. A boil water advisory has been in effect there for more than a month. They say they have to see two rounds of clear samples before they can give the okay. That's a process that the city will begin midweek. 714 right now. Northwest News Radio with traffic and weather. Every 10 minutes on the fours and from the Dubin Law Group Traffic Center, here's Kiara Jordan. We have a lot of challenging commutes this morning and a big one is southbound I-5 trying to get into the Northgate area because for the last few hours we've had a fatality crash investigation blocking all southbound lanes of I-5. You are getting past it using the collector distributor lane. Before you can even do that though, you're sitting in bumper to bumper traffic and barely moving from 220th into the area. That's after you fought your way through some pretty heavy slowing that begins just north of the Boeing Freeway to the 405 interchange. It's about an hour and 45 minutes from Everett into Seattle right now. Southbound 405, a lot of people are heading in that direction. That is really heavy from I-5 all the way to 160th, backing up both directions of State Route 522 as you're approaching 405. Northbound 405, that's been packed through Renton into Newcastle. We had an earlier car fire on northbound I-5 north of 272nd in Federal Way. It's been cleared over to the shoulder, but that's created heavy slowing from about 375th into the area. Northbound 167 is crowded from Jovita Boulevard, often on slowing to 277th and backing up between 212th and 405. Our next Northwest traffic app, 724. Now the forecast from the 1530mortgage.com weather center. Sunny skies and pleasant temperatures today. A high between 75 and 80 degrees. Sunny and 75 tomorrow. A little cooler on Thursday, but still sunshine. And still a high at least in the lower 70s. You may start noticing the overnight temperatures starting to creep down a little bit each night as we get toward Thursday and Friday. But right now the long-range outlook for Saturday is a high temperature around 80 degrees in the sunshine. Right now it's 55. In Seattle. News Radio 1000, FM 977, your information station. Sponsored by Muckleshoot Casino. 
Hey, good morning. It is 716. I'm Greg Hersholt. Manda is off this morning. And Frank Lenzi's at the editor's desk. We learned the identities this morning of the 10 people killed when a float plane crashed into the waters near Whidbey Island on the, over the weekend. One was a Spokane civil rights activist and the founder. The other was the founder of a winery and his family. The U.S. Coast Guard releasing the names. The body of one of the dead was recovered by a good Samaritan after the Sunday crash. Also getting word this morning of the, in uh, the state of Tennessee that police say the body found during an exhaustive search that went on for three days is the woman they were looking for. A woman who was abducted and forced into an SUV while she was out for an early morning jog near the University of Memphis. Police say that the investigators have identified the body of 34-year-old Eliza Fletcher, a school teacher and the granddaughter of a prominent Memphis businessman. Some major Wall Street firms in New York City want their employees back to the office on either a part-time or full-time basis. With summer unofficially over, Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are now calling out their workers to get back to the office five days a week. There are reports J.P. Morgan Chase and some tech companies are having workers come in at least three days a week now. President Biden yesterday repeating his criticism of mega Republicans, again warning that democracy is at stake. Extreme mega Republicans don't just threaten our personal rights and our economic security. They embrace political violence. And ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers is with us this morning. Karen, it looked and sounded very much like a campaign swing. Yeah, it certainly did. And the midterm campaign season is underway. You know, this is now the official launch after the midterm, uh, excuse me, after the Labor Day holiday. We've turned the corner and now it's the sprint to November 8th in the midterm elections. The president was out there in Milwaukee and outside Pittsburgh yesterday, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, of course, two states that are critical for the Democrats in the midterm elections. But we talked about this last week. Three stops in Pennsylvania in a six-day period really underlying how important Pennsylvania especially is for President Biden and Democrats. And yesterday in Pennsylvania, he appeared with John Fetterman, who is the Democratic candidate in that highly contested Senate race in Pennsylvania. He's running against uh, Mehmet Oz, the Dr. Oz, uh, of course, who is backed by former President Trump. And we heard a lot of the message that we heard from uh, President Biden last week in that speech in Philadelphia. There was a lot about MAGA Republicans, a lot about extremism. That's clearly the message he's going to be pushing out there on the campaign trail. But notably, again, and we talked about this last week after the Philadelphia speech, going to great lengths to say this is not every Republican who's a MAGA Republican. He is trying to make it sound like he's not painting the entire party with a broad brushstroke, saying it's not everybody that embraces extreme ideology. He says he knows that because he's worked with mainstream Republicans his entire career. I also understand that he, he had a heckler in one of his appearances and uh, swiftly made quick work of the heckler. <laughs> he did. And, you know, it's kind of notable when you can take that and use that to pivot. There was some heckling. Some of the people in the crowd drowned that out, but then shifted immediately to talking about, uh, you know, how people in that extreme faction of the Republican Party are embracing, uh, by embracing extremism, are embracing violence. And, you know, he also, there was a protester or somebody at least very loudly demonstrating last week in Philadelphia. And he was saying, you know, that's part of democracy, too, is that people like that should be allowed to be heard. And there's a time and place for it. So, you know, say your piece, but don't be rude about it. All right, Karen, thanks very much for the update. ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers. It's 720 now, and Good for Business is powered by Washington Federal Bank. Here's Wafed Bank's Brad Good. When it comes to where to spend your golden years, Washington State is a little tarnished. A new study by WalletHub puts no cities in our state in the top 50 best places to retire. In fact, you have to go all the way to 97 on their list to hit Seattle. WalletHub looked at issues like affordability, activities, quality of life, and health care. Seattle got terrible marks for affordability, but did better in activities and quality of life. Wallet Hub ranked Charleston, South Carolina, number one, followed by Orlando, Florida. Vancouver, Washington was among the 10th worst places to retire. Luxury auto brand Porsche, going public now. Parent company Volkswagen says the brand will be up for an initial public offering this month or early October. Up to 12.5% of the auto company will be available as shares. Porsche sales have been strong in the U.S. in recent years. More than 32,000 Porsches have been already sold in the U.S. so far this year. The Macan SUV model is currently the brand's best seller. We'll see if that revs up any excitement on Wall Street.
That's good for business. And Northwest News Radio. Well, we're losing a little ground on Wall Street this morning. Dow Jones averaged down about 218 points. So the Dow is now at 31,100. That represents a loss of about oh, two-thirds of a percent this morning. S&P's down about three-quarters of a percent, and the Nasdaq's down a little more than one percent. Traffic and weather coming up next, including the latest on the backup southbound I-5 approaching Northgate. And that will give you a chance to win with Did You Hear? News Radio 1000, FM 97.7. We don't play games, except at 10 and 40 past every hour. <laughs> on the air, online, and on your smart speaker. News Radio and sports, too.